Hello, welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 254. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. And I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. It is Monday, June the 1st, 2015. Um, we didn't record yesterday just because I didn't feel like it. And <laughs> Laura had company too, so. I didn't want to like say, hey, I'm going to go in this room and ignore you while I talk to Leslie for an hour. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Plus, it gave us time to knit a little bit. If if Laura's anything like me in this regard, I really didn't have much of anything to show yesterday. I have a little bit more today, but have some stuff. this week has been super busy at work, so I just haven't had the time in the evening. And then two nights in a row, I went to bed before 9 p.m. So That's awesome. I've totally flipped to the summer schedule where I stay up to like 2 a.m. and don't get up to like 9. <laughs> um, Barto, my cat, is a jerk and he's like, it's 4 a.m. It's, it's time potty to time. Let's meow repeatedly. <laughs> Let me sing the songs of my people for you. <sighs> so, anyway, um, I am knitting on. I'm going to go first. I'm go for it. The decision. I'm knitting on three pairs of socks. Only three? Three. That's how many I had last week, too. Okay. Three. I thought you had four last week, though. No, I had three. Um, you thought wrong. I did. I never listened anyway, so. <laughs> um, the first pair has not gotten much farther. This is Two Sisters Yarn Company. <laughs> That's the exact same. That is not a knit four rounds. <laughs> Look, there's a new, there's a new color starting. See that new color? Mm -hmm. It's right there. Um, it just hung out here. I didn't take it with me to Vicksburg. So I, while I've been sitting here waiting for Leslie to call, I've been knitting on it. So I got four whole rounds knit on that. It is Two Sisters Yarn Company, which is gorgeous, in the Outlander something something colorway. I don't know. Looks like that. There's like a dark blue, a gray, a green, and a red, and a gold. So really, really pretty. Yeah. And obviously, I'm caking fail this week. <laughs> but, I think you did pretty good. Oh, it's like all messy at the bottom. But that's okay. We're just going to look at the top. <laughs> so I have that on a pair of sock rockets, size one. All these are on 2.25 millimeters, and it is hanging out in my Amy Beth sock bag, which she just recently restyled. Yeah, it's, um, it's got the different like the edge tab. tab. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, I like the look of the new ones even better than this is. I love her bags, but I like the look of the new ones as well. And her last week's episode, and that's the fat squirrel speaks, was so funny. I was crying laughing. I had so many. I am terrible at keeping up on podcasts. I, I mean, I used to have two or three that I religiously watched every week, and now I, I'm lucky if I get to watch one or two during a week. So I just can't keep current on everybody's, but. I got so many texts about Amy Beth's last episode that I had to go watch it. Uh -huh. And her, you know, big panties of giving up hope had me crying laughing. It was pretty funny. I like the raccoons, too. Yeah, no. Like, I have this picture in my head of, like, raccoon transformers now. <laughs> All going um, after the one cookie. Yeah. <laughs> the one cookie in the Ziploc container. Um, I thought of her, actually, today because they made the book by Bill Bryson, A Walk in the Woods which is about a guy who goes with a friend to hike the Appalachian Trail. It's a lot about bears and bear attacks in the beginning. And they're making it into a movie that comes out later this year. Oh, cool. So um, I really like Bill Bryson stuff. He's a ch mostly a travel narrative writer, but he does some really good stuff. And the Audible versions are usually pretty good as well. So next time you need something on Audible, I highly recommend it. Um, so that's the first thing on my needles. The second thing on my needles, which got a little bit of work, is the Stry Stree, S-T-R-I-E, Toe Up by Laura Neal out of Moon Rover Hand Spun, spun to me, for me by the lovely Jessica. This was my Christmas presents. Um, so it's around four inches, the cuff now. I'm probably going to go to five total. It's a three-ply hand spun. Um, it's got this cool heel with a heel flap built in. It's a toe-up sock. So there's the heel flap. Um, it's on, I think, some high highs sharps. This is what the yarn looks like in the fall. I need to weigh it and see where I am, I guess. Because it was five ounces, so I need to make sure I don't go past two and a half. 
Because I'd like to use it all. That's the perk of toe-up socks. And it is in my Bling Your String Christmas bag. Because I started it at Christmas time. And I like this bag for all seasons. Because in my head, I'm riding that bicycle with the little Christmas tree in the back. Every time oh. you show that bag, I think of um, Amy, Froggy Monkey. It, just, really? it makes me think of her, just looking at that. Aw. And it's got some cool interior fabric, too. I like this one a lot. It hangs out. Um... So that are those are the first two socks, and then I have lots of more works in progress. But these are the ones that actually got worked on. I have another fat squirrel bag that has in it another sock. This is just a toe up sock with a fish lips kiss heel, but it's only. This is the second one, and it's on some carbons, so it's just a wee little toe because. Oh, wow! You made big progress on that. Yeah, so I think last time I had just, I was right at the heel part, right about to do the heel. So um, I am now through one and started the other. So that's good. Yeah, and I made the cuff a little bit higher or wider taller. The cuff, like, usually I just do, like, one stripe repeat for yeah. my thing. I made it actually two. And I can never get the ribbing. I always have a little blip of the other color because I always forget to start. It's like your thing. signature thing. Oh. So, that's the first one with that. I, I wanted to do um, the fish lips cuss heel to show people in my toe up sock class what a short row heel looked like, looks like versus a heel flap heel for toe up socks versus an afterthought heel. So I had all those samples. Versus, versus, versus. You're very well prepared to have all that. Good for you. <laughs> Kind of. <laughs> and actually, my little sample sock that I knit for the class, um, this poor woman got the time wrong, and she came in, it was a three-hour class, an hour and a half late. Oh, no. So I gave her the little sample that I knit the little, um, I don't think y'all even saw it. I knit a little mini worsted weight sock um, as a sample, like a toddler sock. So she got that along with the notes, and I helped her through, like, the, like, we just did <laughs> the toe, and then it went directly into a heel. <laughs> So she could get the cons up down. But yeah, I had great people in my classes. I'll talk about that a little bit later. So there's the first. I can't find my, I can only find one blocker of like four sets. Oh, I have. I have single blockers. Of I think like I have four sets. sets around here somewhere. I know I have two upstairs because I was using them. So the SSK one, and then I have a loopy wooden one. And I'm like, where are the rest of these blockers? <laughs> like, I, I only have one of each. It's so bizarre. Um, That's it for me for works in progress, really. That's all okay. I got. I'm adding. Like I have more because I can talk a little bit more. No, it's okay. I'm I'm adding um, books that I've. Just oh, I didn't some even... of the books that I've read in the past couple weeks. I do have my Citron, which I haven't touched okay. in my bags from Awesome Granny. I'll show it to you again. So this has been a couple weeks. It's my wee little Citron. It's so sad. It needs some love. I need to get working on it for Stash Dash. And that's added some into the world here. Your click, 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 I'm click, sorry. Click. I know that my microphone's right. I'm sorry for y'all that have to listen to that. My bad. I need to end our some books too. I totally forgot about that. We hadn't done that segment. In a I know, weeks. and I, I, so many people have said that they enjoy hearing about that. So, um, I wanted to make sure that I put it in. All right. So I didn't put in all the books that I've read. Just the ones that Will other you people go might back want and to add them while I talk about my plethora of FOs and a little no, bit. <sighs> All my FOs. I think plethora is like one of my favorite. I love words. that, and I love myriad as well, like a myriad of options. I have a myriad of a plethora. <laughs> plethora I remember learning that word, both of those words, in my um, ninth grade honors English, and then the hardest one for me, pronunciation-wise, was megalomaniac. I had to. Huh. I had to practice that to get it. Look at you, all fancy. Whatever. Um, okay, so I'm working on two things. Um, the first is my custom fit sweater, which is um, custom fit is a program that was designed by Amy Herzog and her husband, whose name I don't know. Uh, and it's at makewearlove.com, I think, or customfit.makewearlove.com. I don't know. You can Google it and find it really easily. And uh, basically you put in your measurements and you measure a swatch and the magic customs, custom fit elves create you a pattern just for you. 
So I finished. I need the... to swatch for that tonight, actually, because right now she's doing uh within the first month if you buy one you get one free, and I have like two days to swatch and buy one. Oh yeah, you should. I need to get on it. I'm gonna swatch tonight. So last week I had finished the back, um, which is just a plain stockinette back with a garter edge hem. I mean, um, so and then I had just started the front, so I'm about seven inches into the front piece. Doesn't look like anything really except for a panel of stockinette with a garter hem. Um, I'm knitting this on size 3.75 millimeter, which is a US size 5, and I just did the uh, decreases, and I'm about to start the increases. Uh, and I haven't touched this in a few days, so. Um, I was hoping to have this done for Estes, but realistically, unless it's like below 50, it's going to be They're too... They're saying that sometimes it snows. I know, but it's very unpredictable, so I might bring it if I finish it, but it's usually too warm even at Rhinebeck for me to wear sweaters, so we'll see. Um, and that is living in my Bags by Awesome Granny bag because it's enormous and still has space, even with two... Um, caked skeins of my yarn plus the back of the sweater is in here. So I like that hedgehog pattern. Yeah, and it's still got room. So I just got a package from her. She sent six bags for SSK. Oh, well, that's three nice. medium and then three of the large sets. That's it was awesome. very sweet. That's a lot of bags. Yeah, she's very con considerate. Age. She's lovely. And the other thing that I'm working on has been living in my Kaylee bag, which is probably the, my favorite bag that I've ever gotten from Casey, and it was a gift at last year's SSK, I think. Um, I think it was two years ago, because last year we got the mugs. It might have been. I or, chipped my mug yesterday. Uh, oh, no. That sucks. See, I don't drink a lot of hot drinks like that, so I use it on my sewing desk for my pens uh, and marking tools. Well, I could use it. It could go to that now. That's that way I see it, you know? Yeah, well, so. now it's chipped, so I can't really drink out of it. So it'll get, I'll repurpose it there for awesomeness. That's a good plan. Or just text her and blame her for faulty production and make it her fault. You oh, know, there's always that. <laughs> um, the other thing that I'm working on that's living in that Kaylee bag is the Bridgewater. I don't have a picture of it. This is just the chart. Um, and I am about halfway through the knitted the edging that is knit in the round and then I'll come back and I have to do an applied edging after that so basically it's going to feel like the even star and the never ending edging but um I'm about halfway through the border I want to knit that I really like how yours is coming out and uh I'm going to have to wind up the second skein which I knew because the pattern calls for 1200 yards and these are only a thousand yards each um but I have a little bit left I uh, would like to get through another 10 rows of the chart before I have to wind it, mainly because I hate winding yarn. But uh, I'm knitting that on, this is the Madeline Tosh lace in the Silver Fox colorway. Oh, both of the things I'm knitting are Madeline Tosh, I just realized that. Look at you, all oh, fancy. And I think they're both on size fives too. This is like kismet. Uh, yeah, 3.75 millimeters. It's like a double take, I'm knitting same needles and same yarn company all these vocabulary words have been brought to you by <laughs> so vocabulary lesson is the title of this week's episode all right all right you remember that don't forget it i'm gonna I'll... write it down yeah because otherwise i'll text laura in two hours and i'll be like what was the name of the show again I'll be like, <laughs> and then we have to make something new up. <laughs> okay your turn you have a plethora of fo's i, believe. I do i have a plethora i have three which for me is a plethora that is it's a lot to have three things done in a week man yeah, so um, the first is, well, two of them are super, super fast patterns. The first is um, I cast on and knit in one day a little one of the garter ear flat pads Aww. because for my yarn case, my yarn um, construction class, I had given away my superwash sample because Nick lost his hat. So I, well, clearly. I had to give him a new one. And this I do the toddler size. I actually forgot that it was a decrease every four rows. So this one's a little bit shorter. Like, four rows shorter. So, like, three quarters of an inch. I don't think it'll make a big deal. It'll be fine. The superwash probably grew 
three quarters of an inch. It is Malabrigo Rios. And I love I love the little fringe at the top. A little tassel. I need to make one of these for me. It just needs to happen. Um, it's a Pearl Soho or Pearl Bee pattern. Uh, it's free. Super easy. Uses little short rows to make the little ear flap portion. And uh, it's very, very nice. I enjoy it immensely. And this is the seventh one I've made. Wow. So, and I, I want to do um, a couple more out of some different other construction yarns just to, so I use it as a sample of like, this is what cotton looks like. This is what a single ply looks like. That makes this sense. A short wool looks like. This is what a long wool looks like. So anyway, and the other super fast, I knit this in like three hours. This is the Insta hat by Lethal, Lee Meredith. Mm -hmm. She um, posted the picture on Instagram, but she's got links on the pattern site on Ravelry um, to that and um, another way of doing it. I would use the other way because I'm trying to think what it was. It was like some little blog type thing, like a clipboard type thing. Because on Instagram, you can see the directions, but for some reason, it wasn't giving me all of them. But when I clicked on the other one, it showed all the rows. Yeah, I, I like seeing stuff like that on Instagram, but you can't copy and paste, which drives me crazy. Like, I should be able to just click on it, and it gives me a copy-paste option, but it won't. Yeah, um, so I really, really like the pattern. Just So this is another crafty girl in... Okay, so this was knit on 7s and 8s, primarily 7s, and then use 8s for the cast on. This was knit on ten and a halves using another crafty girl, Marina Bulky, which I love. And um, took like three hours. So super, super fast. I haven't even tried it on. It's even blocked. It's a baby hat, I thought. No, it's a full size hat. Oh. Hold on. I'm going to lose my headphones for a second. So I can say all the bad things about you. And you'll say them all. Me. So it gives like different slouch options. <laughs> so this is like not very slouchy. Could be a little slouchier. I could have locked it a little bit more open. Jess has already claimed it as hers. Oh, well, there's that. So it's cute. It's a little slouchy. I like it. And she's got a pom pom on hers, but I don't love Jessica enough to make a pom pom. <laughs> there's a limit to my love. She One loves my... you enough to spin you three ply sock yarn, but you don't love her enough to. I, this is my love for showing for Jessica three hours. <laughs> but it's really nice yarn, and it was like a limited edition. Yeah, stitches. it was stitches. Yeah. Oh, so pretty. I can't wait till she has this for sale in the shop again. She did do an update, so she does have lots of things in her shop, including her bulky weight, her merino bulky. Now I want to buy all of them in all the colorways at SSK and just knit this hat over and over and over again. Um, something weird about the hat pattern, not really weird, but unusual for modern day knitting is you don't mark the beginning of the row. Hmm. She tells you what, what kind of stitch to stop at and start the new repeat at. So that I had marked the beginning of the row and it took me a couple minutes to figure out that I had done something wrong. Like, it wasn't lining up right, and then I went back and read because reading is fundamental mm -hmm. as a librarian, and uh, figured out where I had gone wrong. And then you actually mark when you do the decreases at the top is the only time you mark. So um, that is finished object two, and size ten and a half needles went super fast, and I used my new needles to magic loop at the top because I got new needles. Mm -hmm. Are you going to talk about that in favorite things? or? I am. Okay. And then um, my last FO still needs to be blocked. You showed this last week, didn't you? No, it wasn't done. Well, I did, but it wasn't done. What was it? Had, like, it had that gutter. Oh. It was still in the needles. I thought it was done. Nope. So my wee little Milo. I just bound it off yesterday. I need to block it, and then I can gift it. So. Very so pretty. I love how this yarn did not pull. It looks awesome. This is Neely's Knits in the Anna colorway on her DK base. So soft and squishy, and I want to make myself a sweater out of it because it's pretty awesome. But I love it, and um, I can't wait to give it away. So Jess and I for Stash Dash have decided we're going to try to knit a baby thing a week. So. Oh, I thought it was a day. No, it's a week. <laughs> That'd be insane. You are insane. Why are you laughing like this is out of the realm of possibility? 
<laughs> but that's like beyond my insane. That's like a new level of insane. Okay. It's much higher than my current level of insane. If you say so. There's someone knitting uh, 15 pairs of socks, and I wish I could be that cool. That is a pretty awesome plan. I love it. Um, you have some spinning. My only spinning is the same as last week. I have, I'm still working on the Romney for my owl. That's going to be a four cable ply. And then I also still have on the wheel the dormant from Hello Yarn. That's going to be a three ply. I have 12 ounces of. So I just put the second bobbin on there and I was letting Renee spin on uh, the shock drives yesterday to try to get a feel for it. What did she think of it? That the wheel was heavy. It is heavy because it's like 30 inches. Hmm. It goes fast. What does she usually spin on? A uh, Maja Craft. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, it's definitely heavier than a Maja Craft. <laughs> is it bigger than a bread box? <laughs> um, I do have some spinning. Um, a friend of mine asked me to spin her... Where is my spinning? A uh, three-ply sock weight. And I did not accomplish that. I failed fabulously. Um, I don't even have it with me. I thought you were doing the Moon River. Is I did. that not... It was a moon rover, but it turned out like worsted weight. You told it says in the show notes that it was three hundred and fifty yards of a three ply. It is, but it's like a worsted weight. It's too heavy to be socks. And I left it upstairs, so I can't even show it to y'all. I'll show you next week. That's sad. Yeah, it it plumped a little bit, which is fine. Plus, to be realistic, each strand was a really heavy lace, so you know. It's okay. I just, I don't like spinning super thin. I just feel like, I don't know. I don't like spinning super thin, so. I like spinning super thin. You can send me all your super thin things that you want. <laughs> and I'll send you all the things that I want bulky. Because I'm terrible at spinning bulky and worsted. Bulky is my happy place. I know. It's not my happy place. It's my place where I cuss at my wheel. <laughs> well, the shock drives really is not meant to do bulky. No. It or anything finer like than, super like, thin, yeah. Yeah, it's not meant to do that. So, um, so we're not talking about your yarn because you don't have it. No, I'll have to... I, I thought I had it, but I must have left it upstairs. Um, but we do have things that make us happy. Oh, I'm this makes me this so happy. So, I love Kirsten Kapoor. Mm -hmm. Like super bias and when i saw she had a book coming out i emailed her and i said hey <laughs> can we get review copies of your book and she said yes and she gave us a copy an e-copy for y'all as a giveaway that's awesome so the paper copy retails for 21 dollars in the u.s and uh, you get a paper and a digital copy for that and the do you yes it's on the website oh but we didn't get a digital because she sent us these for yeah because we got the paper version right um, if you just want the RAV download ebook, it's $18, mm -hmm. which is such a fabulous cost because yeah. there are 10 shawls in here. So that makes it like a dollar eighty a shawl pattern. Yes. Um, these are all previously published, yes. but if you don't own them and you like at least three of them, then there you go. There's value right there. Yep. And they've been re-photographed. Um, Gail Zucker, who is amazing. We've had her, we've had both these people teaching yep. us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, she re-photographed them all. The models are Kirsten's daughters. Mm -hmm. So super cool. Um, they're all different weights of shawls, as in like different yarn weights, like Andrea's shawl. Which I love. Starts with the border and works its way up. And every pattern's got like a little blurb about what's going on. Mm -hmm. This one comes in three sizes. Um, a 19, 22, and 25 inch Depth. Yeah. yeah, depth. Let's use the word depth. That's a good way. And a 42, 49, or 56 inch wingspan across the top. And it is a worsted weight shawl for the most part. It's I think it's worsted weight. It's mm, blue sky alpacas melange. And um, it's on size six needles. So the gauge looks a very worsted weight gauge. 17 yeah. stitches, four inches. Um you start with the edging, then you do the border, then you do the body, and it's just a gorgeous shawl. The charts are very large and very clear. And every pattern has both charted and written instructions. Yeah. Um, I, I really like Olmus. Oh, I love that pattern. And I think one of the reasons that, that Kirsten appeals to both of us are, are the details. So if you look here, it's got that sort of... Um, 
twisted knit stitches down the body that seamlessly flows right into the edging. And yeah. that's just an example of the way that she creates her designs. It's very intuitive. I'm definitely casting on Roma. Yeah, I like that one. It's another multiple color shawl and it uses a worsted weight. Um, the Shibui Staccata. Staccato. Um, and I like how she gives her directions for the garter tab cast on because it's very easy to understand what's going on. Um, again, nice clear charts. There are like four or five pictures. One, two, three. Three pictures of at least of every single shawl. Huh. So that's really, really nice. I, I think you knit this one, a ziggity? I started to, and okay. then I ripped it back because I didn't like the way the colors were playing with each other. But I, I'm going to knit it again. I thought I remembered that you had knit this at one point in time. The name sounded familiar. But I, I like how she's combined the garter and the lace there. I think that's a nice... It's very, very nice. Um, I, I had set it down for too long and then got lost, but I also didn't like how the stitches were looking. She does have a very clear like chart for what your um, count should be for different rows. So I like having that chart that makes it super easy as well. Um, there's a lot of different shawl shapes in here. There's crescent shawls, there's triangles. There's stoles. Yeah, there's um, just a bunch of different shapes. Now, so, the Moulin Rouge, is this the one that she designed for Stacy's Club? Yep. For, That's what I thought, the Tempted yep. um, Yarn Club that we were in. Yep, and then she re it with String Theory Caper Sock. It's gorgeous. It's such a pretty... It, it's one of the ones that I've been meaning to knit for so long, and I couldn't remember the name of it anymore. And that uses... Um, one skein of sock weight. So this is a great way to use up some of the single skeins of solid mm -hmm. colors that you have. Um, and then there's the Malabrigo twist, which is almost more of an Aran weight. And that just looks like that screams Eloise to me, but just squishy yeah, and simple elegance, up. you know, sort of effortless. Yep. And it's a chunky yarn. Mm -hmm. So it works up very fast. There's the two girls together in a half pie shawl. And that street is street. street. And these are there's two different versions. There's a lace weight or a fingering weight. And instructions. The lace weight got a little it's a little bit different in that it's got a couple of um eyelet rows at the bottom. Mm -hmm. But again, there's a chart um for your repeat counts with the stitch mar the number of stitches. So that's great. Calandria is one of my absolute favorites and I it think uses... it's Cladonia. Oh, I'm totally making words up. <laughs> it uses um, a main and a contrasting color of Madeline Tosh Merino yeah. Light. So it's a fingering weight. And I, I just think Kirsten's got a knack for combining textures with the she's got in this one shawl, she's got stripes, she's got stockinette texture, a lace texture, a garter texture, this sort of fringy edging on it. Yep. And it all goes together. It all works in this really cute, flirty pattern. And the photography on this is so well done. Gail did such a good job. Mm -hmm. There's Thalia and the popsicle just yeah. <laughs> is so perfect. And, and the last one, one is Neferdom, which is um, a fingering weight knit on larger needles to give it that airy look. And that was part of the Loopy U Club. Oh, cool. I didn't realize Just that. The sock club. Yep. So really, really lovely. Some great pictures, especially. Um, mm -hmm. The kind of book that you just want to knit every... At least for me, I want to knit every single thing in it. Um, yeah, I agree. Just and if you don't already have the patterns, well worth the $18 or the $21. Um, if you have a few, pick up the rest. I love her stuff. And yeah. I'm actually about to start her mystery shawl, so I'm super excited about that. The pattern released today, and that's what I plan on doing tonight. I have poles. Those are my two colors. How pretty. I'm going to use. Oh, you're pulling out a perfect day yarn. Um, That's how... Cur how special my Kapoor shawls are. 
Not to mention I knit one for Leslie for her wedding. Mm -hmm. Named after a very famous call girl, but, you know, <laughs> you know it I is guess. beautiful. But this is Mermaid's Tavern, and it's got, like, hints of blue with the brown. Mm -hmm. That's a perfect day yarns. And then the other one is Mad Tosh in, um, I think it's Well Water. Yep, Well Water. So I think those two will look great together. It's a half pie, um shawl in the first clue release today so i'm super excited about that so we're going to do a giveaway of the book the yeah. kirsten kapoor book and what is our prompt going to be for that just head over to her rav page and pick out your favorite shawl pattern and or any kind of pattern that kirsten has written and tell us why cool so sounds good makes it easy um so we have one e-copy to give away for that now you have your books, what you're reading and listening. And yes. You have any more than me because I can't even remember what I read yesterday. Well, I've read a lot, but a lot of them, I don't know, I, you know, sometimes I get in the moods where I just read fluffy romantic crap that I don't really necessarily recommend to other people. It's just I'm in that mood to read it. Yeah. So I read a lot of that in the past couple of weeks, but then I actually am now reading an, a sci-fi um, trilogy that's actually mostly sci-fi called uh, Aurora Rising and okay. it is by G.S. Jensen. I linked it in the show notes. If you have Kindle Unlimited you can read the trilogy for free. Um, it's really good. It's uh, science fiction um, like 24th or 23rd century, 24th century and mankind has explored the galaxy and we've settled on a bunch of other planets and we got too close to another alien species and now they want to kill us all okay um so that was kind of interesting and i started listening on audible i went through four credits in like two weeks oh wow i started listening to the red rising series by pierce brown it's a trilogy but only two books are out i didn't realize that and the, I finished the second one a couple days ago, and it ends on, like, you're thrown over the cliff, and you're hovering in the air. Oh, no. And so now, and it was just published earlier this year, so now I know I'm not going to get the next book for at least, you know, six, eight, twelve months. But it was really, it's a really good series. Um, and it's another that we, humanity is um, living on other planets, and this one specifically is centered around Mars. Uh, but it's... It's sort of like Hunger Games-ish, but okay. way more intense. So um, there's that. And then I just started listening to Pandora's Star, which is by Peter F. Hamilton. And usually the way that I look for a new sci-fi book is I'll go to Audible, I'll filter it by the category, and then I'll filter it by the ratings, the customer uh -huh. ratings. So that's where I got this one, Pandora's Star, which is really interesting. It's like 30-something hours, and I'm only maybe six hours into it. But, and this was, it was recorded, I don't know, 10, 15, maybe more years ago. And whoever did the production on it, I kind of want to throttle because the guy who's reading it is really good. I mean, he, he's very, he enunciates everything and all that. But whoever is producing it or produced it and put it together didn't leave any breaks between like you know when you're reading a book and it's not a chapter break but it's like a little section break yeah and you're still talking about the same characters but maybe it's a, an hour into the future or whatever they've moved to something okay. else there's no delineation for that in the audiobook like the guy talks and then there's a pause only about the length of the end of a sentence and then he's on something totally different and you have no warning it's very oh. jarring oh. um because you don't realize it until about four or five sentences in and you're with a totally different character and you know and they introduce like bam they're throwing 30 new characters at you and combining that yeah with, I, I can't do all that it's just it's a good book but the production is driving me a little bit crazy but i've read reviews and they say it gets better so Good. Here's hoping. So those are my um, the ones that I would recommend to other people if you're interested in sci all these are sci-fi. Okay. I've been on a historical romance kick, so I've read the Castles Ever After series by Tessa Dayer. Um, I read the first two, the third comes out later. My local library had them. And then um, an author I really, really like, Rachel Aaron, who does, she says she's non-genre specific, 
Um, this would be more of an urban paranormal type thing. Um, not romance, but more urban paranormal is Nice Dragons Finish Last. She just announced that the second book in the series is coming out in August. But um, she's on Kindle, like, per, does that sale promotion thing. So Nice Dragons Finish Last, the first one, is on sale for 99 cents or free on Kindle Unlimited right now. Mm -hmm. So I thought I would mention that. Um, but really, I haven't been doing a ton of reading. I've been doing, um, actually, what reading I've been doing has been, like, knitting reading in preparation for classes to answer questions that I might not know the answer to. So I've been doing a lot of prep work for classes. Um, we have a question from Crochet in Peace. She says, hi, I'm a beginner knitter from Australia. What does vanilla sock mean? Is it a pattern? What does plain vanilla sock mean? I've made two and a half. Pairs of worsted weight socks, two at a time on one circular four millimeter needle. I'm wanting to try proper sock weight. I have some bamboo skewers that I'm going to use as TPNs. Rock what on. are your favorite cheap long wearing sock yarns? So there's two things there. What does plain vanilla sock mean and what does vanilla sock mean? Usually that has to do, um, that's what that refers to is a sock and knit sock. Yeah, usually it's, it just means that the body of the sock is knit in just knit stitches. Yep, just stocking it. So those two terms are pretty interchangeable, and I have no idea where that, what the etymology is. Um, so that would be interesting to find out. I'm gonna blame it on the Knit More Girls. I would think that that's more of a Knit More Girls um, thing than anything else. And then um, favorite cheap long wearing sock yarns: um, Opal, Opal, and Rogia, mm -hmm. um, Patton's. Croy? Yes, Patton's Croy that you can get at uh, Michael's. You can get for, it's a 75-25 blend, 75% merino, or 75% wool. It doesn't spe specify what kind. And 25% nylon, and they're super wash. You can get for, like, not on sale, $6 a ball, and you need two for a pair of socks. But usually you can get a 40% off coupon and get it for more like 3 bucks a ball. Yep. And so that's under 10 bucks for sock weight yarn. And I'm not certain how this translates into Australia because I've never, I That's don't know if they have big box stores in Australia like they do in the U.S., but um, I would think maybe something that's more local to you would work. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I didn't even think about the fact. Any of our other viewers who are in Australia, because we have numerous viewers in yeah. Australia, chime in and let us know. Tosh should answer that question. Tosh Balaz. Oh, there's so many of our viewers that are from Australia, so yeah. I'm sure they all have it. That's input. true. I don't mean to make anybody else feel less important. She's just the one that pops <laughs> in my head. Um, yeah, so hopefully that helped. Um, my whole rant on Michaels was probably not applicable, because I don't know that you have Michaels in No, you're fine. Australia. But I'm sure they have some kind of big box craft stores. Um, favorite things. The Three Waters Farm Sal slash Kale is gearing up. It started today. Yep. I'm going to... Oh, I forgot my fiber. It's over in the, in the living room. But I'm going to maybe start spinning that today. Yeah, mine's up by my wheel because I'm going to try to start it this week. So I'm excited to see how the fiber for everyone spins up. She is still doing yarn pre-orders, mm -hmm. um, and those will last until June 15th, and they will ship by the first week in July at the latest. Yes. We will have chatter. We have a chatter thread already, but we'll have a FO thread that goes up, and all the entries for that, for the wonderful prizes we will have, will be due by August 31st, 2015. Mm -hmm. Anything else you need to add to that? No, I would just encourage anybody who's looking for a fiber club to maybe check them out because Three Waters Farm is really reasonable and they do a top of the month club where you can sort of opt in anytime. Yeah. And um, Oh, this last month was absolutely stunning. Every month. And then Sarah D. Nets has it spun up and, you know, plied and everything <laughs> and it's done and it just makes me jealous. But, um, yes, yeah, so I would just say check out Three Waters Farm. Uh, there are... Um, scholarship sponsor sponsor thank you i was going to say recipient and that is not correct they are a scholarship sponsor for ssk this year and so we're really excited to to do a knit along and spin along with them as well yep i was at vicksburg this past weekend hanging out with our my good friends renee and eloise and gail renee with knit whiskers came and hung out with me and we drove down all together i drove which was 
full of shenanigans. <laughs> um, so, like, one thing, like, I guess some people from Mississippi call snakes Mr. No Shoulders, which I had never heard before, and it made me laugh so hard I cried. Um, so that was different. I'm going to Google image Mr. No Shoulders real quick and just see what I get. You're going to get a snake. I did it the other day. Totally going to get a snake. Images. I'm glad y'all can't see my desktop because Mr. <laughs> no Shoulders. Well, it's an autofill. There's a lot of snakes. Holy crap. I know. <laughs> it's I'm nothing curious but snakes. This is the etymology. Like, Renee looked it up and said it had something to do with the Vietnam War, but now I'm curious as to the etymology because I uh, want to do all the things. Because a phrase like that is very. And Gail's like, it's because they don't have shoulders. And I was like, I get that snakes don't have shoulders. Well, fish they, don't have shoulders They either, also but... don't have feet. Why are they not Mr. No Feet? Like, it was a very interesting conversation. Um, so, Vicksburg. We drove down on Friday. I taught my first class, which was making the best yarn choice. I had some wonderful people in there. Just the loveliest people. And then I went shopping. And... I bought some Alicia Goes Around. This is the only skein of yarn I bought. Wow. Isn't that pretty? It's her Walk of Snipes fingering weight. It's a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It's 435 yards. She has some gorgeous, like, DK 50-50 silk merino blend. Hmm. Absolutely stunning. But, um... I couldn't afford a sweater's worth, and I didn't know what else I would do with it. So I passed on that and just got that. And then um, I texted Leslie. I was like, I want some. I want these needles. <laughs> yeah. We should get these needles for the tasting room because at SSK every year we have a tasting room where you can try all different sorts of new products. And I was talking to the lady whose booth they were in, and they debuted at um, TNNA, the January show. And they are Ignite. Is this is that the name of the company? Or? Yeah. Okay. That's the name of the company, and they come in a case. You can get a wooden case, which is eight dollars more, or you can get a lovely faux leather case. I didn't care about the case, so I was fine with spending eight less dollars. And then when you pull them out, they are interchangeables, and they've got a sharp tip, little tip, and then wood. And then a connector. Show us the box. Let me show you the box. You want show, to see? I mean, opened. Oh, so the ten and a halfs are out because I took them out. And the fives are out because I was using those in class. Okay. So they range from fours up to elevens. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten and a half, and eleven. So nine different sizes. Uh, two 24 inch cords, two 36 inch cords, one 40 inch cord, uh, stoppers, and you have li the little keys to, uh, um, turn them because they screw into place, kind of yeah. like the nitpicks or the chagoos. Yeah, so you lock them into place with those. So you lock them into place with those. I'm really enjoying, um, so I've only used them a little bit, so I'll give a more thorough review later, but I really like the metal tips on the wood. You should try these, and they're birch laminate. I bet you you'd like them because they've got the metal tips. It's my the way that my body oils interact with wood. Hmm. This is just a bad deal. Hmm. So, um, or maybe I'm crazy. I don't know, but you know, I'm okay with that. I've got this little velvet pouch that keeps all the accessories in there, and it all fits in the little box. And it was eighty dollars for the whole set. So, I now, did you buy nice. it at the? The company's booth or was another no no it? no yarn shops carry it oh, okay so um it debuted at tnna in january okay so people could order it from there and they're made in india so um just interesting the box does have like uh, because it's faux leather it's got that like faux leather smell to yeah. it so i've kind of been trying to have it air out a little bit um, that's about it for purchases. I got a little bit of sp spinning fiber from straw into gold. I got an ounce of nettle to try. Is that a type of wool? No, nettles. Like, you go outside and there's nettles growing. Why would you like, buy that? thistles. Why would you not? I want to try it. It's supposed to spin like flax. You can okay. spin it wet or dry. 
cool. This is an ounce. Look forward to seeing um, what you say about it. Yeah. And then I got some Muga silk, an ounce of that. I should have got more. It's this gorgeous, um, like, honey-colored silk. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, she had a gorgeous uh, Muga silk, like, mixed BFL blend that I should have gotten, but I resisted. Then I bought a pound of a Grey Shetland <laughs> juice, what I've been with. So, um, which, like, the whole pound was, like, 40 bucks. Oh, well. So it was very affordable. Um, and that's it. That's all I bought. So it's pretty good. It helps that Lost City Knits wasn't there. Um, they're having a personal thing go on. And um, Magic and Moonshine just didn't show. Oh, bummer. So, I yeah, I don't okay. know what happened with them, but um, those were, like, the two people I wanted to spend all my money with besides Alicia on yarn. So it made it very easy to be good. Erin Lane Bags was there, too. But Lindsay was at CNNA. So I Aww. think it was her husband. Um, so a nice venue, um, Friday, it's in like the Vicksburg Convention Center. So it's got great lighting, individual classrooms. Um, they were separated with pipe and drape, but still really, really nice. Friday night, we went out to dinner with, uh, Karen, Katie MC. Oh, cool. Yeah. And, uh, Pinsir Baby. And if you're ever in Vicksburg, there is this awesome restaurant called Rusty's, um, Rusty's Bar and Grill type thing. Oh, we had, um, I had uh, seafood pasta, but then for dessert, they had um, bread pudding that was like, bang. Mm. and they also had, I had strawberry cheesecake with real strawberries on top of it, but Katie, or Karen got the bread pudding and it has Maker's Mark whiskey in it. Oh, wow. Good. <laughs> um so good. And then Saturday, I taught two three-hour classes. The first one was at 9 a.m. It was a socks class, uh, socks from the top. Really, really cool. One lady had just started taking the beginning knitting class the day before. Oh, wow. So she, she was left ready it out. She was in. brave. She left it, left in like and was going to town. And it was a great class. Um, I had like eight people in that. And then uh, I grabbed lunch, which was nachos, real fast. Mm. like the fake cheese nachos Uh. convention center whatever and then um i had an attached edgings class um with seven people that afternoon and that was my first time ever teaching that class so anytime you teach something for the first time it's learning experience and they my students were so patient with me um so i have some great fixes and or think not fixes but things i want to do differently for um the loopy u class yeah and uh there were so many awesome people. Oh, and one of the um, ladies who owns a yarn shop in Mississippi just text or not texted. She PMs me and she wants to give me uh, alpaca fleece. And mm. she offered one to you as well. I think it was alpaca or llama. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate the offer. Llama. Like, yeah. Llama. I am. My fleece level is. I'm dying in it at the moment. So. <laughs> so maybe I could process it and send some your way. There you go. There we go. Um, cause I've never processed llama and we were discussing how processing llama might differ from processing sheep. What's up? So on the topic of processing fiber, uh huh. Do, do you have anything else for Vicksburg? Cause if so, then I'll wait until you're done. No, that was basically it. We came back Saturday night, hung out with Renee Sunday, and then she left last night. Okay. Go ahead. Well, I went and looked on the Fancy Kitty site, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> earlier I don't know, last week or earlier this week, I can't remember. And um, they have this new product, a fiber tumbler, which basically is a giant bingo cage <laughs> with wire mesh that is it's attached to a motor, and you can put really dirty fleece in there and turn it on and walk away and come back in 30 minutes, and, like, there's a huge pile of dirt on the floor underneath it. And but probably you're... shortcuts, too, I would think. Yeah, probably. But your fleece is clean. And I was looking Cleaner. at it. Cleaner. I wouldn't say right. it's Right. It's got a lot of the dirt out of it. The, yeah. Just the loose dirt. And I thought, man, that's really smart. And I sent Michael a link and I was like, hey, can you build me this? Because Fancy Kitties is expensive. Which is, I'm sure it's worth it because it's a it's quality $100. product. It's dollars yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's a big thing. It takes a lot of wood and metal and all that. But so, I could see Michael totally rigging like a bingo cage wrapping right. in chicken wire and it not maybe being motorized, but you being... Right. That's the thing. I, I, 
it's not that I didn't think it was worth it. I just thought, hey, I've got a guy who can build stuff. I'll just convince him to do it instead. But um, York Set, who is, that's her Rav name on um, Ravelry. Uh-huh. Oh, the dryer thing. Yes. She mentioned last week, um, on the thread last week, um, and she can't remember where she heard it from, but that if you take... She linked a post. Oh, okay. I totally didn't read that. Or yeah, I did because it had pictures. Yeah, you totally read that. <laughs> yeah. I've slept since then. Um, so she she talked about how if you have... Because I was talking last week about the BFL and how I was like sort of at my wit's end about it because I had washed it twice and rinsed it well, but the fiber itself still has dirt all through it. And when I was running it through the picker, it still was just full of dirt and it was driving me crazy. And so she sent, she posted about um, this method where once the fiber has been washed and is completely and totally dry, not damp, but totally dry. And there has to be no humidity in the air. Oh, well, I don't know how like you would the, control that. Like it's got very, well, you'd have to wait for a day with extremely low humidity. Oh, I didn't do that. Okay. Um, I just made <laughs> sure that my fiber was really dry and I didn't take it directly from outside in the heat. I, I just, it had been inside and it was well, like, you, New Jersey is less humidity than like Mississippi. Yeah. I don't know how you would alter that, but anyway, so what I did was I, I had, um, about a quarter of the fiber that had been washed and had laid out to dry and had been completely dry for several days. And I, t and maybe it's maybe a pound, maybe not quite a pound. And I put it in the dryer and I use wool instead of dryer sheets. I use wool balls. That um, um, and you're only supposed to put it on like tumble. Yes. Like, no heat. No heat. Only the tumble. Only the um, rotation. You just want it to rotate. You don't want to add any heat to it. Um, and you need to make sure your lint trap is clean. And you need to make sure that you have access to clean out your lint trap after. Because holy crap. I had no idea how much dirt was in this wool until I, and it worked fantastically. So I took this pound okay. of wool that had been washed and dried and was totally dry. I put it in the dryer with two of the wool balls that I use um, in place of dryer sheets because that would add agitation with no heat so it shouldn't felt. And I put it in there for I don't know, 25 minutes, something like that. And forgot about it. So it was like an hour when I came back downstairs. And I took the fiber out. And it's, there's still some grass that's stuck in it that's not loose. But it's like stuck in yeah. it. But it's not much. But aside from that, that fiber is beautiful <laughs> and Good. clean. But for you. the inside of my dryer was filthy. <laughs> oh, really? So I, I took a Clorox wipe and, you know, cleaned the inside of it really well. And then when I pulled out the lint trap, man, there was like a mountain of dirt. So sure. I took the shop vac and, you know, got in there and cleaned it really well because you don't want to get your lint trap full. No, because that will catch fire. Yeah, that's a bad thing. <laughs> um, but man. My it... sister's lint trap caught fire. Oh, really? When? In Philly? Oh, uh, yeah. Like two months ago, three months ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, I vacuumed it out really well. But <laughs> <laughs> maybe now I'll do it again just to be safe. Um, I still have a couple pounds that need to be done, but it was that other couple pounds was outside still sitting on the screen for drying and then it rained so it's going to be like a week before it's ready but that's okay rain's not going to hurt it um it'll just make it wet but anyway i just wanted to put that out there for anybody who has fleeces that are still still have yeah. dirt in them after they've been washed and to thank york set because it worked fantastically um yeah. just remember no heat only tumble you just want it to tumble you don't want to add any heat to it so anyway, that, that was my awesome viewer crowdsource tip of the week. There you go. So um, Stash Ash is still going on. It just started. We're in week two. I've completed 1,200 meters. So um, I think I have, I have 350 yards. That's when good. I finish this, it'll be 1,200-ish No, you have your... Um, my sweaters you and the your, needles. You have your spinning, too. That is my spinning. The 350 oh. yards is my spinning. <laughs> I haven't finished anything since Stash Dash started. Can't help you with that. Um, but yeah, you'll have like 
over a thousand meters once you finish that. Do you have a goal? Because you're not doing the 10k with us, I'm guessing. Mm, no, I mean, I would like to hit 5k, but I'm not going to hurt push myself to do it. Okay. Way to not be a team player. I, look, last year <laughs> I did 10k, so suck it. Oh, I think um, I did 10k. Close to 10k. Man, this sucks pretty. Anyway, um, so that's going on in the... What group is that? Our group, the uh, Nick Girls group on Ravelry. Yes. And then, it's... Look, I work today. <laughs> I, I work, work today, too. <laughs> I know. But I'm not used to working when we record. It throws me off. And then, um, after our shenanigans from last week, we will be at Estes. <laughs> We did league. confirm that. Yes, we will be at Estes. Uh, we'll be flying into Colorado on the 10th, and we'll definitely be at the Loop U on the 11th, and we'll be at Estes Saturday and Sunday, but I don't know what else we'll be doing. Yeah, we did Unless have a viewer ask about when we're going to be at Fancy Tiger, and I don't know the answer to yeah. that. I would think probably sometime Wednesday, because it's in Denver, and we're actually going to be an hour outside of Denver, where we're yeah. going to be staying, so... Probably if we go, it'll be Wednesday sometime around lunch, between lunchtime and like. Because we fly out pretty early on Monday. Yeah. So there will be time Monday to go. Yeah. So yeah, Wednesday sometime would probably be our guest. That's about as specific as we can get because we just don't know. We're terrible. We'll post pictures probably on Instagram once we get there. Yeah. And we'll probably be there for a while because we have to see all the things. Um, I think that's it. Do you have anything else that you want to talk about? Mm, I bought a motor for my drum carter. Oh, that's right, you did. And it came in today. And that's oh, why I, I wasn't down here when I told Laura to. When I said, "Hey, be you here at this time," because I don't want to be doing this all night. And then I and then like, like freaking half an hour goes by, and I'm like <laughs> sitting here repeatedly calling her. <laughs> yeah, I'm a terrible person, but that's not news. Uh, yeah, so it came in, and Michael was helping me get it attached, and I haven't even turned it on yet, so. Um, I'm going to be playing with that in a little bit and I'll let you guys, because with Fancy Kitty, that's the drum carter that I have. You can buy the drum carter and then buy the motor later. You can buy them together. You can also yeah. change out the drums if you want to have one for like a medium wool and one for a fine wool. So, um, so we'll see. I'll let you know how the motorized one works next Definitely. week. But, um, and, um, someone asked if we were doing a tour de fleece team, we are part of team Sasquatch. Yes, that's, um. All the podcasters, for the most part. Yeah, a, a big part of Tour de Fleece happens during SSK, and that's just, we just don't have the bandwidth to manage a team during SSK. Yeah. It's just not reasonable. Plus Sash Ash, plus a sale, yeah. plus everything else. But you can double dip with Tour de Fleece um, with multiple teams. Yeah. I'm going to be on Team um, Southern Cross, for sure. So cause I might do them. Team Acre, Acre Works, but that's yeah. probably it. Um, I just... I don't see myself having a ton of time. And then Sasquatch is all the podcasts. Right. Sasquatch is, a, is an assumption. So, um, But that's about it. Yep. Anything else you can think of? Nope. I'm done. My brain is fried. So. Good. I'm going to go make some tea and cast on my Kirsten Kavorshaw. All right. We all have a wonderful week, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye, Bye. y'all.